Now to a disturbing situation in India. YouTube has removed a video from its platform calling for several journalists to be hanged to death for conspiring against the country. But the post was uh, pulled after it was already seen by about a half a million people. One of the journalists named in that video is speaking out in a recent op-ed for the Washington Post. She says that she sounded the alarm after police and government failed to take action. Uh, Barka Dutt f is the founder and editor of the Mojo Story and the writer of the op-ed, and she joins me now from India. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, so give us a little bit of background as to how you found yourself in the middle of this with a video calling for your death. You were covering a story that we've covered a bit here on CBS and the farmers uh, protest against government, uh, against government regulations that have been recently changed. Hey, and uh, thank you for having me. And you're right, uh, the backdrop was the farmers' protest. These are farmers who have been uh, sitting on the streets at the borders of India's capital for more than three months, protesting legislation that they say will allow big business to take over India's agriculture. Now, these are protests that attracted a great deal of international attention. And among those who spoke out in solidarity with the farmers were uh, Rihanna, the international pop star, as well as the teen environmental activist Greta Thunberg. It is against this backdrop that a toolkit, an online docket, was created uh, by some young climate change activists in India and shared with Greta Thunberg. I was among the journalists, along with eight others, who was named in this toolkit as reporters who have been focused on the farmers' protests. The next thing I find is that uh, some, some guy I've never heard of creates a video and says that all of us who were named in this online docket as reporters covering the farmers' protests should be basically executed we should also be arrested and I you know I could have ignored this uh, if this were a troll uh, but this video was watched by half a million people and although YouTube took it down uh, it continued to be reshared on several other uh, platforms and if you do a Google search you can still find this on certain websites and what is worse is that four uh, political leaders who are affiliated with the ruling party, the BJP, actually supported the video. And that is when we understood that this cannot be taken lightly and it cannot be ignored. And those calls uh, for the arrest of journalists for the hanging represent a larger environment of uh, media intimidation that is a very, very real part of our lives as functioning journalists in India today. Yeah, that was one of my takeaways from your op-ed, that, uh, you know, it, it, we are living in an environment where um, journalists uh, around the globe are being targeted, and there are trolls out there that say horrible, awful things uh, when you write a story that they don't like. But I think there's an added level of concern in India because it seemed like it wasn't just the video. It was also sort of the real life um, uh, challenges that you're facing, the difficulty uh, that it comes that you are, sorry, how challenging it is for you to cover stories in particular that the government and that authorities don't want you to cover. I want to ask you how. Do you feel like, you know, that, that that's always been a challenge for journalists in India, but do you feel like it's particularly worse now? And if so, why do you think it's worse now? I do think that it is worse now, and it is worse now because mm. overtly it is as if we have all the freedoms that are available to us, right? We are a very, very functional, argumentative democracy. We have a very, very uh, sort of strong uh, history of elections and a peaceful transition of power. So it doesn't look as if our freedoms are diminishing. But I draw a distinction between being an electoral democracy and an institutional democracy, and what happens between elections sometimes says a lot about the health of our democracy. And what we find increasingly as journalists is that if you hold power to account, there is a, a kind of diminishing space for that. So I'll share something that happened with me right after this hanging video. I, we did a separate story on the murder of two minor girls in a village in Uttar Pradesh, which is India's most populous state. And just for saying that the families of these girls did not want a hurried cremation, we found ourselves slapped with criminal cases that we now 
you know, having to fight in court. So my point is that there are many different ways of, of silencing people, and among them uh, are, are basically getting journalists drawn into a vortex of cases. So just to share one statistic with you, uh, five journalists have been arrested in India in January, and this is a higher number than in the last three decades. 67 journalists were either questioned, uh, detained, or arrested in the year 2020. And India has slipped two places on the World Press Freedom Index. So something's clearly going on here. I would have ignored even um, that hanging video were it not endorsed by four powerful politicians, uh, you know, maybe not very famous politicians, but certainly four blue ticks on Twitter. They're verified handles on Twitter, uh, politicians affiliated to the ruling party who actually endorsed this video. So that makes you step back and go, hey, something's happening here. And basically what that something is, is telling journalists, step in line, otherwise we'll harass you and we'll make you constantly look over your shoulder before you criticize us the next time. Right. And so there's the government essentially co-signing on its behavior, some elements of the government. But then there's also the social media platforms. You know, we said that this particular video, a half a million people saw it before it was pulled off um, YouTube. What's the role in, in your opinion? What is the role of these social media platforms? Are they doing enough to, um, to police this sort of behavior on their platforms? I'm so glad you've raised that because, you know, it, the, the government isn't a monolith. And yes, there are sections of the political establishment, uh, you know, that did endorse this video. But it was a struggle to get the platforms uh, to, to actually respond. And, you know, what they do is they take down this particular video, but then it can be reshared through other handles and so on. And when the eight of us, we, we, we all wrote to all the major big tech platforms, whether it was YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, we said you need to disable the person who made this video, right? Because he is calling, he, he is somebody who's violent, he's inciting violence, he's defamatory, but mm -hmm. that this person, the gentleman who made this video, still has functioning accounts on all of these platforms. And it is a it is a nightmare to get platforms to intercede. Mostly you get sort of these robotic responses back from their algo-driven uh, whatever back offices saying, no, this did not violate community headlines. This time, because, you know, eight of us got together and we made a whole lot of noise, the video was taken down, but the person who made the video there's no action against him. We wrote a letter to Delhi's police commissioner as well, asking for action against him. That hasn't happened either. So I think that merger of uh, online lynch mobs, uh, the, the, the convenient looking away from those who own big tech and elements in the political establishment all come together to create this intimidatory uh, environment. And it isn't just for journalists. I, I should remind your viewers that there was a 22-year-old climate change activist who shared uh, this, this tool, toolkit to amplify the farmers' protests with Greta Thunberg, and she was taken into jail on charges of sedition. So, you know, we're seeing a larger environment, and social media, instead of setting us free, which was its original uh, sort of goal, has actually made mob behavior and even violent online mob behavior very, very uh, possible. And because of the nature of technology, it's very difficult to have safe spaces online, in particular for women, and in particular for women journalists who are outspoken and won't, and, and won't be silenced. Mm -hmm. uh, Barca, we have to leave it here. Thank you so much for shining a spotlight on this. Keep doing your good work, and please stay safe. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.